Hello and welcome back to Dr. Logic Awkwardly Does Logic in Her Kitchen. Last time I defined for you what a term was, this time we're going to talk about formulas. So we've got two types of formulas, atomic formulas and complex formulas. So just as in propositional logic where we had our atomic propositions and we could combine them into more complex things, we've got the same sort of thing in predicate logic, except the whole point of predicate logic is that our atomic propositions actually have internal structure. So they aren't just single unanalyzable units in the way that they were in propositional logic. So what do we mean by that? First of all, recall that we had a distinction in our language between the terms, so constants, variables, applications of functions to constants and variables or to other terms, and the properties, so the relations and the predicates. There are two ways then that we can form an atomic proposition. So a basic statement that is kind of a single unit that gets a truth value. It's analyzable because it has an internal structure, but this structure is in a sense non-logical because it comes from the uh, kind of the bits that we define in the language. So like what our predicates are, what our terms are, what our constants are, etc. So definition an atomic well-formed formula in a quantified language is one of the following two types it is either Tau one equals tau two for two terms, tau one and tau two. So you can either assert the identity of two terms or there is an N array relation symbol R and terms tau one all the way up to tau n and the atomic formula is then written r t1 tn often without the commas it's just i've stuck the commas in there because then you don't get confused by the ellipsis and everything but for instance let j and a be constants and b a binary relation symbol then b a j is an atomic well-formed formula and so is b j a Importantly, these are not the same atomic formula. They involve the same symbols, but they're in different orders. So remember, order matters. And if you think about this, this is obvious. Let B stand for the relation is the parent of. So to say that John is the parent of Ashley is not saying the same thing as Ashley is the parent of John. So a lot of relations are not symmetrical in that sort of way. Anyway, there is atomic formulas. I'm going to clear off this example and then we will have space for writing out the definition of complex formulas. So these are built up from the atomic formulas using the propositional connectives plus our new quantifiers. So definition, this is the definition of well-formed formula. So phi is a well-formed formula in quantifier logic if, again, one of the following holds. 
So it is a well-formed formula if it is atomic. So everything that we defined in the previous definition still counts as a formula. Or there are well-formed formulas psi and chi such that one of the following holds. So either phi is a conjunction, it is a disjunction, it is an implication, or it is a negation. So all of the propositional connectives work exactly as they had before, just for completeness's sake, I will stick in my parentheses, though we will have the same convention that the outermost set of parentheses we will drop and any internal set of parentheses we will also drop if there is no ambigu ambiguity. So this is all basically the definition of propositional logic. What is different is the definition specifically for the quantifier. So that's what we have in this third clause. So phi is a quantified formula if there is a well-formed formula psi and some variable x or y or z or whatever. So any one of our variables works such that phi is either for all x psi or exists x psi. So we put one of the quantifiers on the front. Now here we don't use parentheses, because the quantifier will always, quantifiers work like negation. They always bind closest to the, the formula that they are next to. So let's just kind of write a couple of things down. If we have, I wanted a different color. So for instance, if we had There we go. For all x bx and cx. Written like this, this quantifier only applies to the bx conjunct. If I wanted it to apply to the entire conjunction, then I would need to have, then I would need to have uh, parentheses like this. So it's the same as if we had not bx and cx versus not and then have the negation scope over the entire conjunction. So the scope of the quantifiers is something that we'll talk about more, but just to highlight this at this point. The other kind of thing to notice is that if we have many, many different occurrences of the same quantifier all in a row, sometimes we'll only write down one of the quantifier symbols. So suppose you've got say for all X, for all Y, for all Z, for all W, etc, etc, etc. So some other formula in there. Sometimes just to make writing things down a bit easier, we will do for all x, y, z, w, etc. Strictly speaking, this is the correct version. This is just a shortcut to make it easier to write things down. You should still read it as for every x, for every y, for every z, for every w, etc but sometimes you only just write one down when you're writing it out, especially if you've got a lot of quantifiers strung together like that. So there you go. Atomic formulas, complex formulas. Really the only thing that is different from the propositional case is the introduction of the quantifiers and the fact that our atomic formulas actually have internal structure. They can either be statements of identity in languages that have identity. If your language doesn't have identity, then just scribble that clause out from your definition. Or they can be statements that particular and every relation symbols apply to particular terms, as many terms as we need for. So if you have an n -ary relation symbol, you have to have n terms. If you have a unary relation symbol, i.e. one of our predicates, then it just applies to one term. Nice and easy, very straightforward. Once we have this notion of how to construct these formulas, we can extend our definition of propositional parse trees so that they also cover the, uh, the, the predicate cases. 
it's basically exactly the same, exactly as you would expect. Instead of having um, just one unary case for negation, you can add in the cases for the, um, the universal and the existential quantifier. And then your atomic sentences just are the atomic sentences you start with. I may say something more about that in another video. Honestly, you could probably figure it out on your own, so I may not. In any case, we still have actually a lot to do about the syntax of predicate logic. And one of the important things that we have to deal with in this system is how variables work and how they function in the context of a well-formed formula. So that is going to be the next main topic that we talk about in these videos. So check back in a bit. Hope to see you then. Cheers.